Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone's staying safe and well and I'm going to bring you another video today. So this one's mainly for beginners, whether that's beginners with a DSLR or Astro camera and I'm going to talk to you all about calibration frames. What different types of calibration frames there are, how to take them and what they do. So, yep, let's get into the video. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the bell. You can see that Luna is absolutely thrilled by today's topic. And yeah, I know it can be kind of dry, but you know, it needs to be talked about. So what kind of problems um, or, you know, artifacts or stuff that do we get in an astro image that we want to correct for? So we've got like noise. So I'm going to put the problem here and solution. Well, within, you know, frame wise. So we've got noise, which is like thermal. Uh, so, you know, you like your warm, your cold pixels, um, noise that builds up in the camera as the exposure goes on. We've got like inherent noise, so like the read noise. We've got dust bunnies, which are like, if you've not seen them before, big diffuse blobs on your image. Uh, vignetting, which if you haven't seen that before or you're not sure what it is, that's like when you get like a circle kind of shape or towards one side if, and you get like light fall off at the edges. And let's say sensor glows. So this might be like a starburst pattern or it might be just a sort of glow in a corner. So... It's not very neat. <laughs> so what can we use to sort the thermal noise? Darks. What about the read noise? Bias. Dust bunnies. Flats. Vignetting. Flats. And sensor glows. Darks. So there we go. We've already got a list of pretty essential calibration frames that we need to use for an astro image. So you can see here my amazing image of something, an astro image. So all of these things go into it. So a stack of light frames. Dark frames. Bias. Now it's up to you whether you do bias. With DSLR, I'd definitely suggest that you do do bias. And if you do bias, probably don't do dark flats. But with a, um, an Astro camera, you may want to experiment what works better for you. So whether you want to do bias frames or dark flats frames. Personally, I shoot darks, flats and flat darks. And I don't use bias at all. Um, and... Flats plus flat darks, maybe. So there's a lot to go into an astro image. I can hear you saying it now. What the heck are flat darks? Well, they're j literally just dark frames to calibrate your flats. Um, and I'll cover that when we get to the flats. So don't worry. So in short, these are the calibration frames I would use depending on my setup. So for DSLR, I'd be looking at darks, flats and bias. For a CMOS Astro camera, I'd be looking at dark, flats and flat darks, even though I've added an extra S in there. There we go, that's more like it. And experiment. You should always try and find what works best for your setup. So you could try bias, bias instead of flat darks and vice versa. So try it out and see what works best for you. So how do we take them? So the first one is darks and these are really important to get right. They are temperature dependent. So if you're using a DSLR or a fan called astronomy camera, 
it's best to take your darks after your light frames so they are the closest temperature as possible um, and that's because darks are you know there to correct for that um, thermal noise that builds up as you carry out an exposure but it's also important to have exactly the same settings as your light frame so that's like exposure time if you're doing a 30 second exposure for a light frame you need to do a 30 second for your dark uh, gain and iso and your black level and if you're using a set point cooled cam so like a tech camera um, you need to set the temperature exactly the same So you've been taking your light frames and you're about to take your darks, you've got all the settings exactly the same and you just place the cap on. Try to take at least 30 to 50 dark frames, that's a good rule of thumb. Um, noise decreases every time you double the amount of frames. So yeah, just as many as you can really, but as a rule of thumb at least 30 to 50 darks. So next up is bias frames. Now these are really, really, really easy to take. So stick the cap on your camera or telescope or DSLR and set your camera to the fastest shutter speed. So super fast. And then just shoot. So let's say 30 to 50 again, more is better. Maybe even 50 to 100, I've heard some people say. So yeah, just go wild and take as, you know, a good few bias frames. Okay so here I am I've got my Altair 269C ProTech connected to Sharp Cap and I'm literally going to reduce the exposure time to the minimum possible and I'm going to put FITS files because that's what my, my the rest of my files are in and I'm going to click start capture and unlimited. So here we go it's now shooting some bias frames for me. You'll notice the um, hypercams buffer is well in use because the frames are that fast. Uh, it's taken a while to download them to the camera. Um, if I click stop once we get to 50. Stop capture. It's now just writing those buffered frames to my hard drive. And these will be my bias frames. If I go here, I press the button a little bit too early, but I've got 49 bias frames there. So how do we take our flats and flat darks? Flat darks are really easy. Once you've figured out the settings for your flats, put the cap on and take some more images and these are your flat darks. So flats, we want a uniform illumination of the sensor and it's also dependent on setup. So if you change a filter or move your camera or sort of do anything to that optical image train, you're gonna to wanna to take a new set of flats. So personally, to take my flats, I use an iPad. It's a very expensive flat panel, as you can imagine, but it works really well. Um, you can buy flat panels out there from companies such as Pegasus, um, or you can, some people use those tracing pads, or some people just simply use the sky. I put the iPad on the Notes app, and I've set up something called Guided Access. So, top secret, enter my passcode. Guided access has now started and whenever I touch the screen, it's not registering at any touches. I literally just pop that on the end of the telescope. Um, some people use t-shirts and they'll probably say that I should be using a t-shirt. However, whenever I have used a t-shirt stretched over the end of my telescope, it's given me some weird gradient patterns so I go with that and it works really well. That's the key with astrophotography, what might work for you might not work for somebody else. So just be mindful of that. But yeah, I use an iPad, iPad set up with guided access. 
So I've got my iPad set up with guided access and I'm now just going to pop it on the end of the telescope. So that is my light source and now I'm going to take some images for my flats. Okay so I am now going to start taking flats using SharpCare. So you can see it's pretty green which I, I would expect and if you haven't already watched my video on the theory of flats and all about different sensors and bit depths then I suggest you go and watch it now. But I can already see there's a dust bunny on my sensor, you can see this dark little mark here. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up the histogram. And this is a 12-bit sensor. So I'm looking for a true ADU. Can you see where it says true ADU? Of around 2000 with the white peak. You can see that changing it moves the histogram. So true ADU of about 17, that 1747, so just a touch more. And that's about 1930. I'm not too worried about getting it spot on, but what I am going to have a look is to see if I can still see that dust spot. Yep, I can still see it. So I've now got my settings for my flats. And I'm just going to fire off and shoot a few flats. So once again, start capture. Off we go, capturing frames. So these will be my flat frames. And once I've done these, I'll take the iPad off the end of the telescope and I'll place the cap on and I'll leave the settings exactly the same. And I'll shoot my dark flats. So this is how to do it with sharp cap on an astronomy camera. So I haven't got the cooling on at the minute, but this was how it would work if you know for a general fan cooled camera. Cooling as well, it doesn't really apply. Flats aren't temperature dependent. So now we've done an astro camera, I'll show you how to do it on a DSLR. So making flats on your DSLR is pretty easy too. Imagine this is connected up to a telescope. You'd switch it on and switch to AV. So now I'm just going to expose and notice the histograms around the centre, which is exactly what I want. So when you're in AV mode, the camera generally knows how long to expose for. And you would just fire off about 30 to 50 of those as well. So that is how to capture a number of different calibration frames on astro cameras and DSLRs. Obviously the method can change a little bit um, depending on the program you're using as well. So I know that Astro Photography Tool and Nina both have a tool in them that allows you to enter your target ADU for an astro camera and it will help you take flats. So now you've got all those calibration files you can go ahead into a program such as Deep Sky Stacker or Astro Pixel Processor and you can enter those calibration files alongside your light frames and stack them to make your astro image. Now the, I've got a video on stacking and the theory of it so if you haven't watched that I suggest you go and watch that now and I'll put the link in the video but once again thanks for coming back to my channel and watching my video and hopefully I'll get another video out soon so in the meantime stay safe and look after yourselves bye for now